In this video, I'm going to go over the for loop control structure in C. So the for loop control structure is another loop that we have in C in addition to while loops and do while loops that allows us to repeat a block of code again and again. So if we look at a while loop here, and we can run this, we can say GCC, you know, compile it here and run it over here. We're going to get zero, one, two, three, four. And this isn't surprising if we understand how while loops work because we have I set to zero. We have this condition here. We're going to keep on checking this condition each time through the loop. And so long as this is true, this block is going to run. This block of code is going to run. And what our block of code does is it increments I. And then eventually when I gets to be five, five is no longer going to be less than five. This condition is no longer going to be true. And then execution of the loop body is done. So that's why we get like I zero, I one, I two, I three, I four there. Um, now, what we've got here with this loop is three things that a lot of loops have, which is the initialization of some variable. So you have some initialization of a variable where you set it up to, you set it to some value initially. We have a condition that we're going to check that involves that variable, typically speaking. And then we have some update to that variable, like incrementing it by one or, you know, decrementing it by one or maybe incrementing it by two. Now, most loops have these features. And the, the thing with a loop like this, like a while loop like this, is that maybe the loop is, in terms of its loop body here, maybe it's extremely large. Like maybe we have like, you know, if statements in here that have like all kinds of conditions. And maybe there's even like, you know, nested conditions inside the loop where we have like more things going on. And, and all of this can, can lead to, you know, a very large loop body, right? And our update is then going to be at the bottom here. Like any kind of updating of variables would be at the bottom of the loop. Now this can be a little bit of a pain from a readability perspective, because if you're the developer trying to figure out how many times the loop is going to execute, because you want to modify the loop or you want to see how it's going to work, you have to look at this, you have to look at the condition, and then you have to go find the, the update, very like the update statement essentially where the variable is updated. Now, this can be a bit of a pain. It makes your code less readable. It makes it harder to read. What a for loop does that's very convenient is it puts all this information on one line. So a for loop looks like this. We can actually get rid of this. And I'm going to say here for, and I'll get rid of this too. And I'm going to say here for, and then I'll say int i is equal to zero. I'll say i is less than five. And then I'll say I plus plus, and I've got this semicolon in between those, those three things here. So what, what a for loop does is it puts all the relevant information on one line that you can just sort of read and, and look at to figure out how the loop is going to work. So this here is the initialization statement. This is going to set up any variables that we want to use as part of our loop. This here is called the test expression or the the condition. And what we do here is we check some condition, just like we do in a while loop to see if that condition is true. And if the condition is true, we are going to run the loop body again. If it's not, we're done. The loop is over. And then we have this update statement and the update statement is going to update variables that we're using to keep track of how many times our loop should execute. And so if we, if we take this all together here and, and we compile this and run this one, we get the exact same output bef as before with the while loop. But, you know, our, our code is shorter one, which is kind of cool. But the other thing that's a big thing is that readability wise, we have it all on one line, which is, which is very nice. Now with for loops, um, we typically are going to use them in situations where we want the loop to run a certain amount of times according to some variable. That's what they're really well set up for. Whereas like a while loop with a while loop, the condition here in some sense can be perhaps a little more, I wouldn't say a little more general because you, you can technically do everything with a for loop that you can with a while loop. But the condition here might be something like, well, you know, something is true where something is, you know, maybe a Boolean variable or, you know, maybe it's, it's, uh, you know, a uh, check for some user input or something like that. Um, so for situations where we have a loop that is going to execute a certain number of times, according to a variable, 
often a for loop is going to be better in that situation because it's just, it's just going to generally speaking be more readable because it puts all the information on one line like this. Now with a for loop, just so you know, there's nothing stopping us from altering these variables outside of this, um, this update statement there. So I could say I plus plus here too. And what it's going to do is it's going to then update I twice. It's going to update it here and it's going to update it here. And, and that's why we get like zero two four here because it's, it's skipping one and it's skipping three because we're updating I twice here. We're updating it here and here. So be aware of that. We can still modify and use these variables however we like in the loop body. There's nothing stopping us from doing that, even though it's probably a bad idea. Um, another thing that's important to understand about for loops is that the, the statements are going to run in a particular order. So the way it works is that when the for loop is first entered, the first thing that runs is this initialization statement. That's gonna be the first thing that runs. Then this condition is checked at that point. And if this condition is false, the loop is done. We don't even enter the loop body. If this, if this condition is true, we run the loop body. So we run the loop body. Then the next thing that happens is the update statement will run. Then after the update statement is run, then we check the condition again. And if it's true, we run the loop body. If it's false, the loop is finished. So let's say it's true, the loop body runs again, then we run the update statement, then we check the condition again. And so that's the, that's the pattern you're gonna see with the for loop is, is it's actually equivalent to the while loop that we just had there where this gets run once before the loop starts. This is gonna be run to check to see if we should enter the loop body each time. And right after the loop is, is finished executing, right after the, the loop body is finished executing, that's when this is gonna run. That's when the update statement is gonna run. And that's the order of things. So for example, if I said here, you know, I is equal to five and we try to run this, then what's going to happen is the loop is actually never going to run, right? Because we've set I to five and we're saying that, you know, we're going to run the loop body if I is less than five. So the loop body is never going to run in that case. And, and we just need to be aware of that, that it's not guaranteed to execute. It actually is going to depend on this condition. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Now, another thing with the, the, the for loops as well that we should be aware of is that we can use um, we can use break in them as well. So I could say here, if I is equal to two break. And what this will do is when I is equal to two, it'll actually break out of the loop and it'll finish executing the loop. So if we run this here, even though the condition is supposed to be, you know, I less than five, I can still say if I is equal to two break. And what that's going to do is it's going to break out of the loop at that point and, and finish it. And so, you know, that's a tool that we have in, in, in C break and, and that'll work with for loops as well. We can also use continue with loops too. So if I say this, if I say, let's do it up here, I'll say if I is equal to two continue, we'll run this. I'm going to say we'll compile it. We'll run it here and I get zero, one, three, four. So what continue does in a for loop is it skips over the rest of the loop body. So when continue is hit, it skips over the remainder of the loop body. And so when I is two, we don't print I, we just skip over the remainder of the loop body. So that's why we never print I two here. We just get I zero, I one, I three, I four, but that doesn't skip over the update statement. So continue will not skip over the update statement. That's still gonna run. So even though we, we continue and we skip over the remainder of the loop body when I is equal to two, we're still gonna run the update statement. We'd still set I to three. Three would still be less than five. I is no longer equal to two, so we're not gonna continue. And we'd still output I three. So you, you can use break and continue with for loops like you would while loops and do while loops. And that's gonna be their behavior there. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.